that's, that's, that's fair. Mark Henry interviews Wheeler, Yuta, and John Moxley. Yuta brings everyone up to speed in the storyline. The first time he faced Mox, he was embarrassed in a matter of minutes. Second time, he put up a much better fight, but he still uh, didn't get the job done. But he's not the same as either of those Wheeler Yudas. Now he's the Ring of Honor pure champion, and he demands respect. And Moxley doesn't care about any of this. Wheeler's not his friend. Wheeler's not his buddy. This isn't pure rules. My only job, he says, is to spill Wheeler's guts all over the mat to prove what he's really made of. Which you know, I didn't mention this. Did. I didn't uh, mention this on the uh, review that we did on Thursday of Dynamite, but uh, they had that that interview with Regal and uh, Danielson and Moxley, and uh, Regal was talking about the Utah match, and then it was the interview where Moxley said that there would be rivers of blood. I believe that he said, yeah, and uh, and like Dan- Brian Danielson didn't say a word in the entire promo. He just stood there with a smirk on his face, just kind of enjoying all of this. But uh, everybody was watching Moxley as he talked about the rivers of blood that would flow in the match with Wheeler Yuta. But what you need to do is you need to go back and watch William Regal. Because William Regal stops his portion of the promo. And then he's just kind of stone-faced. He's kind of like a stern William Regal. And Moxley starts cutting this promo of about violence and rivers of blood. And the more he says the more completely deranged William Regal's face. It's like he's, it's like he's, he's uh, you know, like Lone Chaney t- turning into the wolf man mm, as he's yes. doing this promo. If you go back and, and watch this, this, this should be a meme. The transformation of William Regal from just being like a stern, angry man to a fucking deranged lunatic as Moxie starts talking about rivers of blood flowing. He's so pleased to hear these words come out of Moxie's mouth. And I can imagine what he was thinking watching this match. Well, he got rivers of blood. Mm -hmm. He (laughs) sure did. I got sent a uh, text message from my buddy Matt, who has not been on the show, but uh, he it's just a still shot of Wheeler Yuta kneeling on the mat as blood spurts out of his head like a sprinkler. It's gruesome. (laughs) So... Wheeler jumps him during his entrance, doesn't let, never lets him get in the ring, and they just have this insane fight. And Wheeler goes into the steps is where he starts bleeding. He does that right before break. When he comes back from break, he looks like Wolfpack Sting. He's his face and his, most of his chest is I thought you were saying the lone Cheney's wolf man. No, that was hairy, not bloody. Uh. Yeah. Maybe a... Uh, Maybe uh, leftover from Blade, if we could say that. There's a lot of blood in that movie. Okay. But, uh, anyway, he's bloody everywhere, but still just fighting Moxley, for, for uh, giving Moxley all that Moxley can handle. And Moxley's caught off guard by this. This is not the Wheeler Yuta he was expecting. So, <laughs> Yuta just, he starts to take over the second half, and he starts hitting uh, uh, Moxley with all the Blackpool Combat Club's moves. He is using the Danielson stomps. People in the crowd are jumping up and down and chanting Wheeler Yuta's name. He goes for the cross face. Moxley escapes that, hits the big lariat. Yuta kicks at it and screams in Moxley's face. So Yuta hits the paradigm shift and uh, uh, excuse, Moxley hits the paradigm shift and Wheeler kicks out of that. The building is just on fire. Yuta survives the bulldog choke, goes to his own bulldog choke. And finally, Moxley is able to sink in the elbows of doom and hit not the paradigm shift, but a death rider. Mm-hmm. And Wheeler kicks out of that. <laughs> and so Moxley, now desperate, panicking, grabs this man and squeezes with all of his might. And finally, Wheeler goes out and Moxley does not win. Moxley survives. It was ungodly awesome. It reminded me in some ways, and this is going to be a very, very, very weird comparison to the surface, but hear me out. Wheeler Yuta in this match reminded me of a young Cactus Jack match where he's just destroying himself and mutilating himself, but the crowd's going nuts for him, and in the end, he still loses, but they still love him. He took a hellacious ass-kicking and survived it and got himself more over in the process. It was amazing. It was so amazing about this match. There were many amazing things about this match. This match was absolutely fantastic. I, I talked about it the other day. You know, I, I watch on delay, and so I started getting all these text messages before I even started watching the show. And uh, this was like a series of, you know, like a dozen emails and text messages and tweets 
all at the exact same time. So it must have been the moment this match ended in the building. Everybody just marked out and had to tell me that I had to watch this match. And uh, it was... Uh, I had one person say that it was like a match of the year. And I'm not sure it was a match of the year. But as I watch it, I'm actually not sure it's not one of the matches. And I've seen a lot of great fucking matches. I saw the Briscoes against FTR, which I think was a better match. Mm -hmm. But uh, in some ways, I guess it'll probably uh, be determined by how far uh, Wheeler Yuta goes in his career. But uh, this was an absolute, in one night, star-making performance for a guy that uh, that you rarely see. And the thing with the match was, I don't know how many people watched this match and actually thought that Wheeler Yuta might beat John Moxley. I think, I think that everybody knew that what he needed to do was go in there and do like a really, really good job and come close. I'm not sure how many fans thought he might actually win. But as this thing got going and he started kicking out of these moves and starting to do his own stuff, I think that people started to believe that he might actually beat John Moxley. And when he put the bulldog choke on the guy, it's one thing to beat John Moxley. Like maybe they're doing whatever and and Wheeler Yuta cradles him and he beats him or whatever after a, a back and forth battle. I don't think anybody thought, oh my God, he might submit John Moxley with his own move. But man, they bought it. And I thought the best part of the match was, you said, Vinny, yes, sir. you said that, uh, that Moxley didn't beat him, he survived. Wrong. He did beat him. However, what he did was, he, he made him go to sleep. Because he was unable to submit Wheeler Yuta. He tried every single submission that he could come up with, and Wheeler Yuta avoided or got the ropes or escaped every single submission. He tried every move on the guy, including his DDT and his Death Rider. He could not pin this guy. He could not submit this guy. All that was left was he finally was able to put him in his bulldog choke, and the guy didn't quit. He did not give up. He went to sleep. So while Moxley... He didn't win. He was unable to beat him in the traditional sense. You must win via pinfall or submission. He could not beat Wheeler Yuta via pinfall or submission. So really, Wheeler, you know, he couldn't be beaten by Moxley in this match. He was he was put out and everything like that. But I thought that was a very clever part of the story. He It wasn't like, you know, a lot of these matches, oh, you hit the guy with the DDT, he kicks out. You hit him with the DDT again, he kicks out. You hit him with the Death Rider, you pin him. So at the end, you finally did pin him, even though it may have took two or three of your finishes to actually do it. It takes three Rainmakers or... You know, Lesnar has hit four F5s on Roman Reigns, whatever. This was not that. He couldn't pin him with multiple attempts, and he was finally forced to choke the guy out. I thought this was just unbelievably, unbelievably great match. The thing about this match is before Wheeler Yuta, before this match, before about, oh, I don't know, seven minutes into the match, I did not care a thing about Wheeler Yuta. He was a fall guy. He had beaten, beaten by Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. He'd been beaten by Moxley. He's just a guy. And three quarters of the way through this match, a guy that I really did not care about at all. I am now actually rooting for. And uh, it was a heck of a performance. Um, it obviously is going to lead to something bigger. Uh, the guts on this guy is uh, admirable. Um, I I went from not caring to actually wanting to see him do something, and I want to see what happens next. So, kudos. Well, what happened next here is that John Moxley in victory. The bell has rung. The match is over. He has in fact earned a W. He does like the shocked two count face and backs me to the corner that he can't believe this animal he's in the ring with. And Regal and you, uh, excuse me, Regal and Danielson go to ring down to ringside. And <laughs> Regal has mentioned it. I know in his book, I think in a few interviews, he talks about how he's deceptively large. He's a very big person, but he never stands up straight. 
And he gets in the ring with Danielson, and they all, like, encircle Yuta, like they're going to finish him off. Mm-hmm. And Regal is, his fists are blown up, his face is all nerd up, and he's down low in a boxing stance. He's actually shorter than Danielson. He's squatting so low in this stance. But what Regal, uh, what Yuta does is he's on his knees, blood still pouring down his face, and he just looks at him and says, come on! Which, of course, is exactly what Regal wanted. Eventually, Regal offers a handshake. Yuta accepts. Wheeler Yuta wipes his face with his hand and then writes BCC on his chest in his own blood. He is accepted into the Blackpool Combat Club, and Moxley lets him know now is when the real work begins. This was so freaking great. You know, it's going to be uh, interesting to see now that uh, young Wheeler Yuta is in this uh, this Blackpool Combat Club. Now what? Yeah, maybe next he'll come out on Dynamite and just slaughter people. Well, that's my question because I've I've seen a lot of Wheeler Yuta matches and he's not like a slaughterer. Sure, he's not he's not a butcher. If you know yes. what I'm talking about, that's the key. Like, is that because here's the thing, the Blackpool Combat Club. You got Danielson, who is uh, who is according to Regal the best wrestler in the world, and he butchers you with wrestling. The perfect wrestler. Yes, and then you've got uh, Moxley, who is the uh, the violent brawler, who just butchers you as if he is a butcher he pummels you and he punches that side of meat and he slices you open and uh so what's wheeler yuda's role is he gonna be like a uh i don't know uh, is the p- pure champion he can slaughter you with cradles okay. <laughs> well that's my question what's he gonna bring to this blackpool combat club i'm interested to see let's see how it goes i do think not like uh, they haven't thought about it yet i'm sure this is yeah this is not something new to them i do think something of a makeover is in order thank I, you i think the he colorful, does need some new fucking tights the colorful tights gotta go and hair yes. he, he's a haircut yes. as well my his, uh his haircut screams children i'm a fan pajama bottoms that look like wheeler you just tight so. <laughs> i'm sure they do actually yes he so. needs uh like he, he went actually... and had those made yeah well yeah, it's, right they're fine indie wrestlers. It's tights. not like it's not like you 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 get a grab bag. No, it's not like there's you know the the seventy five dollar tight deal where it's like I got you get, Yuta. A, you get a plastic quarters, bag. Turn the dial and, and oh, this one's get. got uh, this one's got yellow lightning bolts and and pink stripes <laughs> on it. That's cool. Like this guy designed these. Yes, yeah. yes. So why? Yeah, they're, they're fine, colorful indie guy types. No, they're indie. not. They're horrible. Well, they're they're, so they're especially horrible. They they're not intimidating. That's for sure. No, no. And, and uh, his, his little Nike tennis shoes. So my quick, goodness. I quick was tips. hoping that when Moxie did that promo with Mark Henry, he would have mentioned the tights. <laughs> that was the only thing that was missing. Yeah. But a quick trip I'm going to gonna butcher you twice as bad because of those fucking tights. I'm going to slice you once for every fucking random stripe on those fucking tights. <laughs> quick trip to the barber and the seamstress will be on his way. Okay. All righty. What's wrong with his haircut? It's just, it's, uh, the, generic. It's, it's, it's a generic. generic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got Brian Danielson, who's got the generic He's bowl a... cut that's just long enough to tie up. He's you got Moxley, yeah. who I think just cuts his hair by himself because he don't give a fuck. Yeah. So we're worrying about everyone's haircut. Yes, because it's he. It's it's it's. it's, it's I don't know. It, 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 it screams. I am not intimidating. Yeah. yeah. You, you buzz it or mohawk it or mohawk. something. Yeah. He's, he's, he, Grow it out would be an option. Grow it out would and, be an option. And how would you describe Hook's haircut, Vinny? Does that scream intimidating? Yes. It any does. Man, any man who walks around with that haircut and doesn't get beat up is a tough guy. You do not live in a town with, like, a local high school dude. This is every single dude between the ages of about 16 and 21 today. Well, That's a works, lot of them. It works including both of my cousins or whatever they are. Nephews? Nephews. What are what are anyway? Nephews. So hey, nephews. it's time for the uh, Q and A, everybody. That's so, uh, family tree. Yeah, well, you know how it goes. So here's what we're gonna. Oh, this person suggests a mohawk. Yeah, so do we. Wheeler, you do with a mohawk. You, I've been oh, actually, I think he might be questioning you, Craig, because he actually put a question mark. I'm Why your not? host, anyway. Brian Alvarez, joined, of course, by Big Vinny V. Hi, Brian. Craig. Hello. Lance Storm. Is that a towel? Craig, uh, legit looks like Julius Caesar. Yeah, I did my my hair down. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Seems like we got a lion loose in, in uh, Lance's house, coincidentally. 
Yeah. <laughs> is Lance, that a Lance, puma? Lance brought the yeah. jungle beast. I was hoping Bridget would come along to either feed me these grapes or wave me with one of those big fans, but when I suggested this, she was surprisingly negative. What? Why? I like that idea one bit. Why? Oh my god, Vinny, please. Mm. Make sure you take that outfit to Hawaii and get video of you running down the beach in it. Oh, bro, oh. this thing's going everywhere with me. It's awesome. All right, here we go. I couldn't take a big one. Ugh. Mm. Excuse me. Look who's here. Vinny, hand her them grapes. I have the greatest wife. She's going to give me a couple of grapes, not too many. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> like all Romans. <laughs> have you ever eaten a grape before? It's not I've alive. I've fed a grape. Thank you, love. I appreciate it. I'll take one more. No, I won't. Oh, God, she's really... Hey! One more. Knock it off! Hey, we're not having a food fight in here. God damn it. <laughs> Grapes all over the floor. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.